Twilight looked at Spike and said, Spike, the ring! The baby dragon straightened up at that. Oh, right! He moved the ring out from under his arm and took it both his claws, bringing it up over his head and throwing it forward. It flew straight for a second before it stopped and expanded with a vroom. Sonic ran up alongside the ring, put his left hand on his side, and the steering surface inside the ring faintly showing the clearing in front of Sakura's hut. Rainbow flew straight towards the ring, leaving a rainbow tail behind her as he flew up to the ring and hovered above it. Come on, you guys, let's go! As he called. Silver could see that the shaking was still keeping the non fires from finding a stable footing. Eyeing the trail Dash left, he focused the psychokinesis on it before it could disappear completely. He began to manipulate it, lowering it down so it didn't exactly touch the shaking stalagmites, but also led straight to the warp ring. He looked at the other, saying, Here, use this! Twilight, while carrying Spike on her back and blazing Sakura with her magic, managed to get on top of the rainbow trail. If that is to be solid, thanks to Silver Psychokinesis. Thanks, Silver! She said, before Karen running across it. The air was quickly falling. Apple Sack went through with Twilight, followed by Rarity, Pinkie Pie, Fireside, Little Strongheart, Brave Bird Tails, and Hangers On. As he released his psycho grip on the ta rainbow trail, causing it to disappear, Silver looked down at the lava and saw that, in the distance to his more liquid like movements, was beginning to rise. He looked over at Sonic and Rainbow. That just leaves us now. Sonic gestured a ring and said, After you guys. Rainbow concluded, See you on the other side. The idiots finally managed to recover from being bowled over and were now nosing the activity around. Hey, I don't like the look of this, the brown dragon said. Purple dragon looked over and saw Rainbow Dash fly down from where he was hovering above the warp ring and fly through it. Hey, <laughs> looks like we're using that ring, ring thing to get out of here, <laughs> he pointed out. Silver ran over and jumped through the ring scarf and said, Where are their heads good enough for us right now? Sonic looked over at the dragon and started moving in his direction. He looked down a moment before grumpy decided the warp ring on his left hand, swinging himself around, going through it on the side opposite of the dragons. As the rings began to shrink, the teenage dragons managed to slip through it just seconds before a sudden lava wave fell over the spot where the ring had been. The teenage dragons grunted as they hit the ground face first. They quickly recovered from the sudden landing, at which point he realized something was different. Looking down on the ground, he realized it was completely white. It felt like growing grass. What's going on? Where are we? The purple dragon asked. Before Garbo could answer, he heard voices behind him and turned to see Sonic, Silver, and Rainbow Dash standing a short distance away. Silver was speaking. Those were some pretty cool maneuvers back there, Rainbow Dash. I was focusing on getting that slag my tip down to size, but I did get a look at some of them. Rainbow rubbed a hoof over her chest as he smugly replied, Well, of course. Lily's working on their moves. The dash does everything with a little bit of awesomeness. Sonic and Silver couldn't help but smile at the attitude. Silver then looked at Sonic and said, And Sonic, you did a good job back there, too. That's what I expect from the real deal. Sonic grinned as he shrugged. Well, I try. Silver reached back into his quills with his right hand and pulled out the Silver Chaos Emerald. He looked at it for a moment before looking at Sonic and holding it out to him and said, Here. You can have this, Sonic. You guys are collecting them, right? Sonic looked at the Chaos Emerald as he replied, Well, yeah. No doubt they're going to come in handy fixing this mess. He looked at the Silver and asked, But are you sure that's okay? You're not going to need it later. Silver nodded, I'm sure. I wasn't really planning on using it for anything. Besides, you proved yourself back there. You deserved it. Sonic said, All right, if you say so, dude. He held his right hand and closed it around the Chaos Emerald, taking it for Silver's hand. Garble finally chose this moment to speak up, yelling, Hey, wait a minute! And Turiel turned over to him and the other dragons, nosing them for the first time. Garble went on, You head over that chip right now! If you think you're gonna get it up now, you're dead wrong. Before he could continue, Applejack called, Go over here, y'all! The color's coming black! Sonic, Rainbow, and Silver turned to look at the rest of their friends, who were standing in front of Sakura's hut. The place is Sakura in front of them. And fight ran over to them. Teenage dragons were gone. As they joined a group of friends, they saw that Applejack was right. The grass of the clearing had already regained its color. Sakura's hut and surrounding plant life was beginning to regain its color as well. Within a minute, the color had completely come back to the clearing. Looking to Blaze and Sakura, they saw that they were beginning to regain their color as well. Blaze was the first to recover. And to Spike and the ponies' to surprise, she, after blinking several times, looked up and turning around in midair, I did on a nearby tree prance from Sakura's hut. She had quickly jumped again, landing on top of the hut, directly beneath the canopy, covering her with her arms crossed. 
Sakura, meanwhile, finished regaining her color. Blinking twice, the zebra examined her body. And smiling when she was served, she was back. She then looked at the group and spoke, I was afraid when the creature grabbed me, but now I am pleased. You came to rescue me, so my worries are eased. Blaze, having known Sonic Tails and Silver among the group of unfamiliar faces, and deeming it safe, looked down on top of Sakura's hut, landing next to the zebra. She stood up straight and said, I must extend my thanks to you as well, although I do dislike relying on others. I am grateful for your aid. The creature was... Too much for me to handle it alone. She held her arms out in front of her, clenched her fists. She finished speaking, seeming to be slightly upset she could not do more. Silver saw a tail side at her. Silver holding up his left hand and clenching his fingers into a fist while looking down. And now, for a rumble with Blaze. Before anyone else could say anything, Garble angrily yelled, HEY! Everyone turned to look at the teenage dragons. He said to raising an eyebrow, confused. Don't you turn your back on us! We want all those gems you idiots have, and we want them now, he said. Dude, the only reason why anybody gives you a time of day is because Reality Check gave you that one appearance. As I said before, I'll say it again. You're an insult to males everywhere. You're an insult to dragons everywhere. You are pathetic, worthless, and you're one of the most cliched character archetypes in existence. Everybody hates you. Scientist, wagging a finger as he said. Are you guys still going on about that? Why should you give it up already? He learned his hand smirk. Bringing over persistent won't win you any popularity contests, you know. Blaze is a card step forward, joining the others. Blaze looked at Silver and asked, Who are these three? While well, glaring at the dragon, Silver replied, They're a bunch of thugs, Blaze. Thugs that don't know when to back off when someone says no. The purple dragon growled, You're trying to be smart, white guy? <laughs> Spike said, Hey, Silver's only telling the truth. Nothing wrong with that. Celestia spoke. You three have caused quite enough trouble for one day. As cruel ruler of Equestria, I order you to cease your efforts at once. Zakora said, With Princess Celestia, I most certainly agree. Leave now, or in more trouble you will be. Carl spoke. Oh yeah, like I'm afraid of you. What are you going to do, ride me to death? Let's see how you like this. He then reared back and thrust forward, releasing a plume of flames from his mouth. Spike Tails is a car and all ponies took a step back at that. Tails saying, Oh no, that's sort of spread to the rest of the ever free forest. Sonic and Silver looked at Blaze. Sonic asking, You got this, Blaze? Raising her left hand up, Blaze replied, Of course I do, Sonic. Anybody want to bring out Find Your Flame for Sonic Frontiers? Because I'm playing it. She did snap her fingers. As soon as she did, something started to happen to the flames. They were going a straight line before, but now we're starting to angle down towards the ground. Starting to the ground in front of Blaze. Instead of spreading out like everyone expected, they instead stayed there for a moment, before what looked like a snake's head made of flames stretched out of the flames. Stopping when it was eye level with flames. Spikes to and the ponies looked on in awe. Ah, That was A-W-E! Ooh, thank you! Despite the fact that it was made of flames, it looked like a real coiled-up snake that was extending its head up. Even the dragons were shocked by what they were seeing. What the? Garbo exclaimed. While stroking the fire snake head with her right hand, Blaze said, My cells are hot with flames. I can control them. Create them. She raised her hand and snapped her fingers, the fire snake immediately disappearing. She then gave the dragons a piercing stare as she finished, an end them. Spike murmured, whoa. Grumble grunted, ugh, never expected a key cat to do that. A vein grew on Blaze's head as she heard that. What did you say? She asked with a nose or sharpness in vo her voice. Sonic crossed his arms and whistled with all rolling his eyes. Oh boy, he did not just call the princess of another dimension and guardian of the soul emeralds a kitty. The expression of Silver's face indicated he also knew what was going to happen. Garble smirked. So, she's a Nambi Pambi princess too. Well, isn't that kick his ass, Blaze? He didn't get a chance to finish. In a blink of an eye, Blaze dashed for the spot where she was standing, right at the Garble with her right fist in front of her. 
slamming it to the dragon's stomach as the tail of the flames left in her wake started to shrink. Removing her fist from his stomach, but he stepped back as Scarble fell to his knees. Ugh, you, uh, oh! He groaned as he tried to recover from that sudden strike. Blaze's only response was to strike again. This time, kicking him in the face over a high-heeled shoes, sending him flying onto his back. Once again, Spike, Sakura, and the ponies were in awe of Blaze's display, while the dragons just looked shocked. Silver, meanwhile, grinned. Looks like they just found that you got claws, huh, Blaze? Blaze nodded. A smart falcon hides his claws from view. So, am I still Nambi Pompey? The brown dragon stared. Oh, uh, uh, no, no, sir. No, ma'am. <coughs> You're done with that. He and the purple dragon quickly moved back, reaching down, grabbing Garble by his arms to pull him up. As he finally managed to get on his feet, Garble glared at the brown dragon growled. Are you kidding me? She's just going. You're just going to give up because she's tired of that? Well, I'm not. She's going to pay for this. Before other dragons could reply, Garble broke free and ran towards Blaze, who learned herself into a fighting stance. As they started fighting, Luna stuck with Bet Sonic and asked, Do we help? Sonic looked over at Blaze and Gar Garble, noticing the way Blaze was nimbly dodging Garble's attacks, moving to the side when he punched, leaping up when he tried to use his tail to knock her feet out from under her, darking under his wings before he replied, You can if you want, but I don't think it's Blaze who needs the help. I was offending about Garble! Blaze continued to dodge Garble's anger and induced attacks for about a minute, before finally catching his fists with both hands. She then gave him a hard push backwards, throwing off balance for a few moments. She then danced up onto him, jumped on him, placing her hands on his shoulder. She then jerked back, falling back to the ground, bringing the dragon with her. As soon as her back touched the ground, she brought her right foot up and planted it against his stomach, mentally engaging her fire abilities as she did. As she pushed up with her foot, a burst of flame suddenly blasted out of her shoe, sending Garble flying. As he landed on his back near the other two dragons groaning, Sitting up, Blaze looked back at him and said, I've had enough of this. So he looked at Silver and asked, Silver, do you mind taking care of them? The Hedgehog replied, Gladly. He then ran towards the dragons as the brown and purple dragon were helping Garble back on his feet. Just as he started fizz getting up, he found in his balance. Silver grabbed him with psychokinesis, green aura surrounding the dragons in the left hand. He glared out for a moment before saying, Take this! As he spoke, he swung his arms out forward, blasting one of the psychic forces, sending him flying straight through the campy of the Everfree Forest. Soon, following the departure of the dragon, introductions had been made for both Blaze and Sakura. Afterwards, Sakura went to check on everything in her hut that was present, while Twilight's friends began to crowd around Blaze, keeping Twilight, Spike, Celestia, and Luna from getting a chance to talk to her. While Appetack and Rainbow Dash cheered for her display, and Flareside was her usual size self around her, Rarity and Piggy Pie were a bit more intrusive. Rarity appraised her clothing like the fascination she was, and Piggy was her usual bubbly self, being cheerful and jumping from one topic to the next, unknowingly making Blaze feel very comfortable. Sonic and Silver eventually had to step in and convince to give Blaze her space. Oh, stupid Silver over there and... My love of the Silva ship and Silver being good for Blaze and the rest of frickin' dirt no good. Hey, if it'll make you feel better, if we can read to ourselves a little Blaze fic or a Blaze comic that just has her being all cute and sexy just for you. Do you mean it, Trex? Of course. Thank you. At this moment, Sakura came out of her hut, wearing a look on her face. Tails noticed her coming and asked, Is everything okay in there, Miss Sakura? Sakura smiled. Please, young Tails, there's no need to use miss. Saying my name is fine and would not be a miss. I smiled and eased off as he said, As for your question, it's not all okay, that's for sure. Several posters in my saddlebags are unaccounted for. Little Strongheart asked, You mean they are stolen? Sakura replied, That is the only thing I can guess at this time, but it begs the question, who would commit such a crime? Rayburn looked at Applejack and said, Cousin Applejack, you know a polo foil better than I do. Is there any polo you tell you want to do such a thing? I don't know if to speak badly about any polo, but stealing from his Libra, I ain't right. Applejack replied, 
Now Pauline Pumpfield's never had anything against the Cora since we found out the truth about her. And I doubt the Saintly Queen or Gilda will have taken her potions or bag for any reason. See so what your Rainbow Dask and ask. Gilda didn't do anything funny during your race with her, did she, Rainbow? I know, apply. Other than trying to sheep by dropping school off the clouds? <laughs> no. I tried to keep an eye on her throughout the race, and she didn't go off course or anything like that. Besides, what would Gilda do with potions anyway? I was that grunted. I don't know. That's why I'm asking. You know that Griffin butter ain't any of us. Dill said, Well, that causes both the Changely Queen and Gilda off the list. Silver asked, So what does that leave us? Blaze said, A solid lock it leaves us no closer to the answer. Sign crossed his arms. Yeah, we've got nothing right now. No suspects, no evidence. He looked over at Sakura and asked, did you see anything out of place in your hut that looked like it could be a clue, Sakura? The zebra shook her head. Signed to look at the others and finished. Then all we're doing right now is going around in circles, asking questions that we don't have any answers to. Celestia and I, I agree with Sonic. There's nothing more we could do right here for now. For now, we should head back to Ponyville. Perhaps some of his citizens know something or some pony unusual enter or exit the forest. Piggy Pie popped up in front of Sakura and said, Don't worry, you stripey heads of car. We'll track down the mystery thief and make them give back everything he stole from you. That's like when we solved the mystery of who ate the cakes. Mmm. You know, you were telling me that time. Oh, it's a really good story. You see? Piggy was silenced somewhat when Rarity came up behind her and slapped a hoof over her mouth, causing Sakura to raise an eyebrow at her while Piggy talked into the hoof. Rarity laughed nervously. <laughs> that does detest us all. Piggy is right, Sakura. We're most likely to help you any way we can. See them back away nervously while dragging Pinky. Sakura still looking at her oddly. So I go to her Tails and ask, Hey Tails, is your radar picking anything up? The fox reached into his tail, pulled out his radar, flipping it open and examining it for a few moments. He soon looked up and said, Oh uh, no, I'm not getting any signals right now. But it'll let me know right away if it picks anything up. Blaze asked, What kind of radar is it, Tails? After putting the radar away, Tails answered, Well, since time is messed up right now, and portals to various locations and time periods are showing up all over Ponyville, I made this radar out of spare parts from Eggman's old badniks to detect signals of new portals when they appear. Makes writing them easier for us, you know. Silver asked, And you made that out of old badnik parts? Tails nodded. Blaze smiled. Your botanical prowess continues to amaze me, Tails. Tails blessed could giggled a bit at that. Is Marie going to show up? Because I think we've gone through my list of accents I could actually do, and um, I think a female Australian girl will just probably round it all off. Well, we don't have Antoine, so we can't do your French accent. True. Sonic spoke. Well, nothing show up on the radar right now. We should have time to check around Ponyville, like Princess Celestia said. My, this does feel like a, an open world game, doesn't it? I'm I took off her hat and said, Yeah, maybe I could get this fixed while we're at it. I don't particularly like having a flame hole in my hat. Rarity finally took her hoof off of Pinky's mouth. The party pony said, And then I said, Oh, no, are you crazy? I mean, I... Pinky continued to ramble on about how some things shouldn't go together. Before switching to another subject. Rarity shook her hoof, making sure Pinky hadn't gotten any spill on it before returning to Applejack. You can see her magic to take her hat from her hoof. I'll take care of it as soon as we get back to Pettyfield, Applejack nodding. I need to take all these gems back to the castle boutique anyway, she said. Sago door is a car I'd ask. Hey, Sakura, you want to come with us? I'm sure you're used to the Everfree Forest and all, but right now it might not be a bad idea to hang around Ponyville. Sakura nodded. At the scene that teacher, I would have to agree. I wonder now that it had before it has been in the other three. Celestia said, Then let us go now. There is no time to waste. And with that, she turned and started walking in the direction of Pointville. Luna soon turned and followed after her, so did everyone else after Spike climbed up to Twilight's back. As they walked through the Everfree Forest, Twilight noticed Blaze talking to Silver. For a moment, she was considering waiting until they got to Pointville to try and talk to her, but then decided now would probably be the best time. Quickening her pace slightly, she walked until she was walking alongside Blaze, though so still letting her have her space. When there was a break in Blaze and Silver's conversation, Twilight spoke. 
Uh, excuse me, Princess Blaze? Blaze looked over and said, Please, don't address me by my title. It means nothing here in Equestria, and I don't like it when my guards address me by it. Twilight looked over and said, saying, Sorry. Blaze waved ahead and then said, So, did you have something you wanted to say to me, miss? Twilight parked up for a bit and said, Oh, right, you might not have heard earlier because Pinkie Pie and Rarity were talking to you, but my name is Twilight Sparkle, and this is Spike, my friend and number one assistant. She tested to the baby dragon sitting on her back as he said that last part. Spike, for his part, waited while saying, Hey! Please look to Spike. Um, hello. Well, I can't say I've ever had the privilege of painting a baby dragon before. Spike seemed satisfied to hear that. But he looked at Twilight and asked, So, was this all that you wanted, Miss Sparker? Twilight replied, Well, earlier I was talking with Sonic and Tails about some of the things my friends and I have gone through since Spike and I moved to Ponyville. And during a few of those conversations, Sonic mentioned you. Blaze raised an eyebrow. He did. Twilight nodded. Yeah, he told me a bit about you, some nice things about you. Things that made me want to meet you. Blaze's expression turned to normal that. Oh, well, what did he say exactly? She asked. Twilight replied. Well, he told me that until you traveled to this world and met cream and cheese, you were kind of a loner, preferring to do things by yourself, etc. But he's not in confirmation, so Twilight went on. That's kind of like how I used to be before Princess Celestia sent me to Ponyville. Except for my brother and Spike, I didn't really have any friends. I was too focused on my studies and thought the idea of having friends was silly. Blaze asked, But you know another loss. So nine. You sure don't see like that now, Twilight? Spike giggled. Yeah, but other than that, she hasn't changed that much. Twilight glared back at him before turning back to Silver and Blaze and saying, Yes, I didn't learn there's nothing wrong with having friends. In fact, they're great things to have. I realized this when they insisted on helping me after I read about a thousand-year-old prophecy and wanted to stop it. They helped me every step of the way, and we succeeded in preventing the night from becoming eternal and saving Princess Lena. After that, I wanted to stay in Ponyville with my new friends, and Princess Celestia allowed me and Spike to. Place 9, I see. That reminds me of what happened when I first met Cream, Sonic, and their friends for the first time. The soul emeralds that kept my world alive had been taken by Dr. Eggman. And as I followed him, I went to Sonic's world, where I set about trying to retrieve them from him. Suddenly, after I set out, I met Cream and her child friend, Cheese, who insisted on coming with and helping me. I was initially confused by her actions, and did not agree with her and her other friends when they said they should seek out Sonic. We offensively fought, which is when I realized I was wrong for thinking I could save the world by myself. And after I saved Cream for Dr. Eggman, Sonic and I said everything right, and I departed from my world. Ty smiled, well it seems like you become good friends with Sonic, just like I become good friends with Applejack, Pinkie Pie, Rainbow Dash, Fluttershy, and Rennie. Blaze nodded, I have. I've reflected on everything that Cream, Sonic, and their friends have taught me, and I see the wisdom in them. While I am still running around others and still try to handle things myself, I am more open to social events and spending them with friends. Honestly, at times, I feel foolish for being alone as long as I was. Silver so patted on her shoulder, saying, Don't worry about it, please. That kind of thing happens to all of us. Besides, you admit that you changed too, and that's a good sign if I ever saw one. Despite what Spike says, I'm sure Twilight's changed a lot too. So Cora sat alongside Twilight and spoke. It's seen she has to that, and as she learns, she changes still. Since her arrival, she has done much and become a large part of Putty Fit. As the conversation continues, Sonic and Tails were walking further ahead. Listening as they walk, Tails smiled at Sonic. You're right, Sonic. They're getting along great. Sonic nodded. I have a feeling you would. Never hurts to know someone you can relate to. As they continued walking, it stopped again and worked its way up to Twilight's brain. When they were near the edge of every forest, Twilight to Silver had asked, Hey Silver, what did you call the crescent shaped blade of Aries you made before? Silver thought about her questions for a moment before he answered him. Oh, you mean the psychic knife? He asked. Twilight nodded, Yeah, that. How did you do that? Is it something you mastered? Silver replied, uh, Sort of. I came up with it and perfected it after hours of training my psychokinetic powers. Why? Why do you ask? 
So I looked down at the ground she started. Well, this might sound a bit silly, but... So you looked up to and asked, I was wondering if you'd be able to willing to teach me how to do it? 